Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Denali-41. Our last episode ended with Phidias the Gnome sliding under a strange bullet-like creature and gunning it to save the party members. As the creature's viscous blood poured out freely, it adversely affected the Gnome who began to convulse and foam at the mouth. We rejoin the group as they render aid to their fallen comrade. What do we do? What do we do? exclaimed Harris the mage. Yolanda Two Blades and Grish, the Zenobian cleric, feverishly poured all of the water onto the goo-covered gnome, attempting to clean off the toxin. Brother Stance and Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, looked on in horror as their small associate shook uncontrollably. Once all of the green fluid was removed, the gnome went still and began to pale. The Zenobian said a quick prayer over the body, and a small bit of color returned to the gnome's face. Sir Omel took a knee and prepared to use his lay on hands of healing ability, but was stopped by Grish. Yolanda quickly spoke up. It's a toxin, a poison that is secreted by the creature upon death. He needs an antidote. Your healing will do him no good at this point. Concern crossed their faces and Stance spoke up. Where do we get the antidote? Do we have any? What do we need? The cleric and female warrior looked at each other. They mulled over a response, and Yolanda pointed out that there was only one place. Tigos Vale, to the south. Grish shook his head and pointed out that it was quite a distance on foot, and Phidias may not survive the trip. Sir Omel stood up and grabbed the monk. Stance, let's grab one of those Kanta things and use them as a transport. The pair ran towards the wandering creatures who began to scatter at their approach. Harris, Grish, and Yolanda finished cleaning Phidias and bandaging their own wounds from the fight. A few minutes later, the knight and monk had returned with one large bird in tow. It wasn't easy, but we caught one of them, exclaimed Brother Stance. Grish looked at them dejectedly and spoke. One isn't going to get us to Tigo's Vale, my friends as the others nodded in agreement. Sir Omel spoke boldly. It won't get us all there, but it might get Yolanda and Phidias there. These things can carry you, Grish. One can certainly carry those two. The group shook their heads in agreement and looked to Yolanda for approval. She considered it briefly and nodded, agreeing to the plan. You'll need to lash him to me, and I'll need some type of bridle to steer the beast, she added. The party members quickly formed a harness to carry Phidias and a makeshift bridle for the feathered creature. After hoisting Yolanda and the rogue onto the Kanta, Grish confirmed that, that she remembered how to get to the mining colony. It's been a few years, but I think I can find it, she acknowledged. The Zenobian gave her a medallion and advised the fighter to find the old witch Sarcona, stating that she would have an antidote. He added that the group would attempt to catch their own rides and follow behind. Don't stop for any strangers, added Harris the mage. Sir Omel smacked the Kanta on the rump, sending it scurrying south towards the mining settlement. A few hours of rough travel found Yolanda and a quivering but still unconscious gnome within sight of a cliff. Plumes of smoke rose over the side of the edge, and Yolanda observed the community below. Scouting out a likely passage, she headed for a crude roadway. Focused on getting to Tigos Vale, she did not notice a patrol of gnolls hiding in the grasses. Several twangs followed and arrows filled the sky. The aim from the humanoids was a bit off, but two arrows did find their mark into the Kanta, who quickly picked up the pace to avoid the predators. The sounds of more arrows followed, but Yolanda observed no pursuers behind her. As the Kanta reached the edge of town, it collapsed from the injuries, throwing both Yolanda and the comatose Phidias to the ground. 
Several poorly armored individuals ran up to the pair, and as blood streamed from a head wound caused by a rock, Yolanda pulled forth the medallion, and darkness fell upon her. Grish bent over, breathing heavily, as did Sir Omel. Brother Stance and the wizard ran up to them, also panting. Ah, these damn things are fast, grunted out the Knight of Bacchus. We've been trying for an hour with them, and grouped together, now they're watching us too closely. Not sure if we're wasting our time or not. Stance stretched out and complained about needing a drink. Grish apologized for using all the water, but pointed out that Phidias surely would have died if he had not. Harris waved off the apology, stating that the cleric had done the right thing, and there was no need to explain. Sir Omel caught his breath and inquired about the Sabus. Grish explained that they were typically known as land sharks, and their leather plating made them difficult to kill. He added that the easiest, but most dangerous way to kill them is to target the soft underbelly. Harris interrupted the anatomy lesson and pointed out that the herd had moved to a small copse of trees. The trio looked and grunted their approval. They probably want the shade, pointed out Brother Stance of the Verte Order. Harris nodded but continued, If you three can take the long way around and not spook them, I can move forward from here. I'll cast my web spell as you guys chase them from behind. I should be able to catch a few that way. The group pondered it for a moment, and then gathered their collective breaths, and the three nodded in approval. The trio went on a small journey, taking a deep orbit to get behind the creatures. Harris the mage snuck forward slowly and managed to avoid notice. After a few minutes, he gained the position that he wanted and waited. As he watched from the concealed spot, he observed his three cohorts rise from their movement and charge the kanta, yelling loudly. Harris popped up and cast his spell across several trees. The fleeing herd animals never saw the spell, and five of them slammed into the soft but strong sinewy webs, causing them to be captured and squawk loudly. As Stance, Grish, and Omel got to the trees, grins crossed their faces. Grish pointed at Harris, stating, Nice job. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.